Let's talk some chess. We've got a great modern game to talk about today. This game was played in the 2022 Meltwater Chess Championship Tour Final. Uh, Duda is playing with the white pieces and Anish Giri with the black pieces. And this game is canonically known as Duda's Immortal. So only been a year, so we haven't had much time to test its immortality, but certainly an amazing game, and I hope uh, you enjoy talking about it with me. So uh, Duda opens it up with d4. We have knight to f6. Uh, c4, so kind of something looking like the queen's gambit, but with no pawn on d5. We have uh, e6, knight to f3, and now uh, d5. So kind of sort of transposing into something like the queen, I, I guess technically the queen's gambit declined here. Um, and uh, instead of taking the pawn, uh, Duda just puts his knight on c3. So uh, already sort of a, a little bit of a weird variation. Uh, Gary immediately puts his Gary immediately puts his bishop on b4, so pinning the knight to the king. And here, uh, Duda just takes on d5. So knight takes or pawn takes on d5, pawn takes back on d5, and now bishop to g5 by Duda. So uh, a little bit of nice symmetry here. You have both dark square bishops pinning the knight to either the king or the queen, and kind of a fun position to start. We have knight to d7 uh, by, I guess, knight b to d7 uh, by Geary, so guarding this knight and connecting the two knights nicely. And now rook to c1 by Duda, so adding some firepower, adding some protection to this knight in case maybe the king castles or something, or just this, you know, this is a semi-open file and you want to get a rook uh, prepared along this c file. Uh, h6 kicking away the bishop, uh, forcing a decision, you know, do you want to take the knight uh, or retreat? And in this case, Duda wants to retreat. Not the best move to take the knight because then you just get another knight replacing it on f6 and now the light squared bishop can develop easily and this is not great for white. So instead the bishop just retreats to h4 um, and you know generally when you're pinning a piece you don't really want to capture it, you don't want to unpin, you want to maintain the pin. Um, and Geary here gets aggressive and uh, plays g5, really wants to kick the bishop away from this knight because he has big plans for this knight. Um, and this, you know, this is an aggressive move, it all but guarantees that uh, uh, you can't castle kingside because now the pawn structure is just totally destroyed. So a little bit risky for the king. Uh, you obviously can't castle queenside yet because the bishop and the queen are blocking your path. So uh, definitely a very aggress aggressive move from uh, Geary. We have bishop to g3 by Duda. This is the only move, getting the bishop out of harm's way. And now knight to e4. So kind of the reason why Geary wanted to keep this knight is he had this knight to e4 move in mind. Now you're attacking the knight, which is pinned on c3. You're also attacking this bishop. So uh, certainly a, a powerful knight. You know, you're threatening to break up uh, Duda's pawn structure, which is basically unstoppable because you can't take back with the knight because the knight is pinned to the king. Um, so here... Uh, uh, Duda just uh, puts the queen on b3. This obviously develops a piece, and it forks two other pieces, so it forks the pawn on uh, d5 and forks the undefended rook on b4, and so uh, Kiri just captures uh, captures on c3, and now pawn takes on uh, c3. And here we have uh, knight to uh, b6 by Giri, not taking the bishop and messing up uh, white's pawn structure, but uh, putting the knight on a better square. The knight is now defending this d5 pawn. It's ready to come to c4 if needed, and you've also opened up the light squared bishop as well. So just uh, maneuvering here from both sides. We have e3, um, and now uh, uh, h5 by, uh, uh, by Geary. So uh, starting to get some pressure around this dark squared bishop, and here uh, Duda actually ignores the pressure and plays c4. And this is kind of the, the first crucial moment in the game. Um, you can see how there's obviously not a lot of space now for the dark square bishop. So uh, if you play something like, oh, not h4, but h3, making some space for the bishop, then the game might continue. Uh, knight takes, uh, now pawn takes, and now you've sort of messed up the pawn structure. And now after queen to d6, you know, threatening this g3 pawn, this isn't very fun to play with the white pieces. So, you know, this is a hard pawn to defend. You have king to f2 in the position to try to defend this pawn. But now your king's on f2, your pawn structure is pretty messed up, and this is not super fun. So Duda actually says, I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to allow knight taking bishop, messing up the pawn structure. Instead, I'm going to get an attack of my own going with c4. Um, and this is when stuff starts to get interesting. We have h4 by Geary, because now, uh, you know, you may, may have seen, but basically this bishop is essentially trapped. So, um, you know, this pawn on h4 is obviously protected, and the bishop can't go to any of these squares without being taken. It can go to e5 without being taken for the moment, but then uh, Geary just has this f6 move, and now all of these squares are taken away by pawns. The bishop can't take the pawn because it's defended twice by the knight and the queen. 
only needs to be defended once, but twice is also fine. Uh, so now this bishop is uh, is in trouble. Uh, but that's okay, actually. Dude is about to lose a piece, but he's about to get a huge attack. And you can sort of already see the, the problem. The king is here on e8 still. It hasn't castled. And there's just nothing, you know, there's a lot of empty space in this vicinity where uh, white's pieces can really start to infiltrate and attack. You know, all the pawns are gone. None of the, you know, there's no defensive pieces except for this rook, I guess. But uh, really... It, Geary's like really going all out to try to capture this bishop, but the cost might not be uh, the cost might be too significant for um, you know just the price of, of a single bishop. So, anyways, due to captures on d5, and then we have pawn takes uh, bishop on e5. So now Geary is up a piece, um, but now we see sort of what Duda had in mind, and he opens things off with uh, bishop to b5, and this comes with check. So a really nice development uh, check move, um, and here we have king to f8. You know. This doesn't look very fun blocking with the, uh, the the C pawn because then you just get pawn takes on C6 and if you take back you lose the rook so that's that's not very fun at all. Um, I guess you could play bishop here and then you don't lose the rook because it's protected but this still doesn't look very good because then you have this queen uh, uh, check. So anyways, just ignore me talking to myself. Uh, Gary obviously knows better and he plays uh, king to F8 trying to get the king out of harm's way but now you have this knight takes on E5 move. Um, and again, this is kind of the idea behind Duda. Remember, Duda could have sacrificed the bishop on uh, g3, but he wants to sack the bishop on e5. He wants to get this pawn to e5 so his knight can come to e5 with tempo, sort of clearing out a pawn. So that's sort of the idea here. Um, and now you have this very dangerous knight, this very dangerous bishop, this very dangerous queen, um, all attacking the black king. And uh, the immediate threat here is playing knight to g6, which would fork the king and the rook. So obviously not very good um, for Gary. So Gary wants to avoid this. He doesn't want that fork to happen. He plays king to g7. Now that gets out of the fork, defends the g6 and the, the f7 square. The proper move here uh, per the engine is queen to d5, taking on d5 and offering an exchange of queens because the queen is defended by the knight. Geary is up material and he's being attacked, so you want to trade pieces off and just get into a boring endgame. But in this position, white would just continue by, you know, sort of engaging the fork with uh, knight to g6, forking the king and the rook. After the king moves, then you get knight takes rook, king takes, and um, I forget what the engine says here. I think even a queen trade is okay for white. Or no, I think, I think well, I don't want to spoil the, the move here for white because we'll, we'll actually see it play out on the board. Um, but that's the proper, uh, more robust way to defend. But Gary puts his the king on g7, and now we have bishop to d3. And this is a this is a really uh, nice sort of retreat move. Um, he's attacking an undefended knight, so the knight obviously has to move unless you know you want to lose the knight. It's not easy to defend this knight, um, but you're also going to have this bishop now slicing uh, along this diagonal where it will be very impactful for the rest of the game. So. Just you know, keep this uh, bishop to d3 move in mind because it's going to be very important for the attack that Duda puts together. So uh, Gary retreats the bishop to d6. Sorry, retreats the knight to d6. Um, now this is you know a good strong defensive piece, and now uh, Duda just castles king side. So now you have a very safe king here, um, you know, castled behind the the pawns and the rooks, and then a very not safe king just completely out in the open. And you know you do have to be a little bit careful. These pawns are obviously pretty advanced. You have a rook behind them. So Geary is going to try to, you know, march these pawns forward, break up the pawn structure, whereas Duda is going to try to take advantage of this king, which is just totally in the open, and, and deliver a checkmate. And remember, Geary is still up material. He still has an extra knight, um, you know, a knight for two pawns, so not really up that much material, but he does have the extra piece, um, so he's going to try to take advantage of that as well. So we have g4. As I mentioned, Geary's pawns just marching on. And now um, Duda just explodes past it with uh, f4. So uh, you can't play on Passant here. If you take, uh, then you just get rook uh, takes on f3. And now the rook is in the game <laughs> and controlling the f-file, and that's not very good. Um, so Duda just uh, moves forward with the pawn. But now all of a sudden you have these four really nice pawns in the center. Two of them are pass pawns. Um, and, you know, they're just marching forward. And uh, unfortunately, the king is in the vicinity. So this is a... Um, a difficult thing to deal with with the black pieces. Um, Gary puts his rook behind this newly created pass pawn. He puts the rook on f8. Uh, and now we have uh, even e4 by Duda. So uh, taking advantage of these pawns, just marching them down Broadway. And, uh, you know, obviously going to cramp uh, uh, Gary's position here. So g3, Gary wants to break open the pawn structure even more. Um, and Duda actually just completely ignores it and plays f5. So 
three straight pawn moves for Duda, uh, taking advantage of, of these pawns, and this kind of forces Gary to play uh, queen to g5, uh, now guarding this f6 square, so you can't get this f6 move in with check, because then the rook would take. Uh, you have rook takes, maybe rook takes, and queen takes, so, so that's okay. And also getting the queen in a threatening attacking position, so hoping to team up with some of these pawns to put some pressure on the white king. Um, and here we have the move that kind of was previewed earlier. Well, I, I didn't preview it. I, I talked about potentially previewing, previewing it. Um, this queen, the entire time, sort of quietly has been defending the c7 pawn from the rook on c1. Um, and here, Gary just made the decision to abandon the defense of the pawn um, because, you know, it's almost more important to defend against this pawn now and get an attack going himself. So he sacrifices the pawn, and Duda happily takes it uh, with a beautiful rook lift. Rook takes on c7 with check, and now you can sort of feel um, Geary's position falling apart. There's a knight, there's a rook, there's a... The queen and the bishop are blocked by pawns, but these are great pawns, and there's just not a lot of space for the king to run to. So the king goes to, goes to g8, and now you get this... This is, a, honestly, to me, like, the, one of the coolest moves of the game. Um, this uh, bishop to b1 move is a really just calculated retreat. As I mentioned before, this bishop will prove to be very important in the attack, but it also opens up the path for the queen, the path for the queen to get to the king's side and join in on the attack. So just a really savvy retreat here by Duda. Um, and Gary tries to strike back with queen to d3. Now you're attacking a bunch of stuff. Uh, you're threatening f2. You know, if, if the rook for some reason ever moves, this queen to f2 move would be nice, but uh, not going to help, it, as we will see. So now we have queen to f3 by Duda, so that's the idea behind the bishop retreating. The queen now comes to the f file, and now uh, Gary gives up a piece, tries to equalize material to take away some of the pressure. So trying to remove these really powerful pawns. Now, you know, these are four passed pawns in the center of the board, so trying to get rid of some of them. Uh, bishop takes on f5, and you know, this bishop wasn't doing much, so it's not the worst trade, and now you've connected the two rooks, so maybe this will, um, you know, create a more robust uh, defense. Uh, so e takes on f5, and now queen takes on uh, d4 with check. So now, you, you know, you've, you've removed two of these pawns, and now they are sort of isolated pawns, so you've definitely lessened the threat of the, the past pawns in the center of the board. Only move that makes sense is king to h1, uh, and now you get rook to uh, c8, rook a to c8 by uh, Geary, and... Obviously, Gary wants to trade off as much material as he can and, you know, make use of whatever material advantage he has left. Um, but I gave it away. Pretend you didn't see that. Uh, sorry. But this is the position where Duda can essentially uh, end the game. So uh, take a moment and pretend you didn't see that and see if you can find the uh, winning move here to kick off uh, just a beautiful checkmating pattern while I give you a moment. Okay, so uh, you may have seen it on the board, but uh, if not, the move is rook to g7 with check. And this is just a, I mean, this is an awesome move. It's obviously a, a rook sacrifice, um, but it's very unclear the purpose of this sacrifice. I think, you know, many of us would just trade the piece off and, and continue the attack. Um, but it, it's, it's a nice move because it's unclear how else you would continue the attack. The queen can't come to g4 because it's protected by... Uh, the black queen, the knight can't check the, the king. This rook is not joining in the attack as of now. Um, so this is a surefire way to get the attack going um, and, uh, and and really set things in motion. So rook to g7, you know, you can't really, the only square for the, it, you have to accept the sacrifice. If you move the king, then this just, I mean, uh, this queen to h5 move looks really good. So you have to accept the sacrifice. Giri does, he takes the rook, but now you get uh, f6 with check. This is the sort of f6 move we were talking about earlier, um, and finally Gary is able to get it in. And what's really important, sorry, Duda is able to get this move in. And what's really important with this move is not only is it check, not only does it engage the queen and the rook, but it opens up this beautiful diagonal for the light squared bishop on b1. So I told you this bishop would be very important in the attack, and now it's starting to, you know, rear its ugly head and just totally control this diagonal and, and really make it difficult for Gary's king. So the king moves, there's not many moves that make sense here. Um, king moves to h6 to protect from queen to h5 check, um, but now you just get knight to g4 with check, uh, and now the king's running out of options. So we get uh, king to g5. Um, again, you don't want a, uh, a queen check. These squares are protected, so there's no real queen check that makes sense, um, or at least it seems like it doesn't make sense because 
uh, Duty here plays the incredible, just amazing queen to f5 check. And, you know, the king has nowhere to go. All these squares are, are covered. Uh, so he's forced to accept the sacrifice. And yes, this is a sacrifice because the knight on d6 is uh, uh, attacking the queen. Um, and so, you know, you have to take it and uh, Geary does take it. But now you get rook takes on f5 with check. And now the king is in uh, real, real trouble. Um, so again, awesome. Sa we, you know, we just saw a rook sacrifice and a queen sacrifice. And if you look at the material, uh, Geary has two rooks and a queen and a knight, whereas Duda just has a rook, a bishop, and a knight, and this awesome pass pawn. Um, and so, it, you know, huge material advantage for Geary, but this is just an unstoppable attack that that Duda had to see. So you get uh, uh, king to g6, which is the only move for the king. But unfortunately, that goes into the path of this amazing light squared bishop. And now you get the rook sidestepping to e5 with a discover check from the bishop. Uh, and the king, uh, again, is forced only move to f7. Um, well, okay. So I, this was the position, I think, where I think after uh, Duda took on f5, Giri resigned the game because he sort of saw the ending of the game um, and saw how things were going to go. This next part wasn't played out on the board, but I wanted to show you what the checkmate would look like. This is a forced checkmate and I think like seven moves. So let's see sort of what it looks like. King is forced to go to g6. Rook sidesteps to e5. The king only has one move. All of these squares are covered either by uh, the rook, the knight, uh, or the pawn, or of course the bishop, which is checking the king. So the king is forced to f7, but instead of going to f7, you know, you could you know, do the stockfish move and just block with the rook, block with the queen, and then the king goes to f7, and now you have uh, rook to e7, check. The rook is protected by the pawn, the pawn is protected by the knight. The king, again, is forced to the eighth rank. King to g8, knight to uh, h6, check. King to h8, and uh, finally, rook to h7, and this is checkmate, because the bishop, again, is protecting this rook. The knight's cutting off this square, the rook's cutting off these squares. And that's game over. So, just an, an awesome, awesome finishing sequence. I, you know, I just want to go back to this, like this queen sacrifice here. You know, it looks like Geary's okay because all of these squares are are covered, uh, they're protected, and it's not clear how to continue the attack. But uh, due to saw that giving away the queen is totally fine, and after the rook takes, there's just no way to prevent um, a beautiful checkmate. So, an awesome game, a really fun modern game, and. Uh, uh, I do a lot of older games, so this is cool to see one that happened very recently. We're still seeing, it's cool to see that we're still seeing these amazing chess games happen in, in modern times. So um, thanks for watching. Drop a like, drop a subscribe, and we will see you next time.